Okay, so I would like to draw your attention in this video, first of all, to the websites above. These websites give great information in terms of parachutes and the various um, attributes that a parachute might need and uh, details on what affects such things as the drag coefficient uh, of the parachute. Okay, so if, just in case I made any errors taking it down, this manual, which is in your training section of my website, uh, also that contains the references to these, plus gives a bit of detail on the parachute design as well. Okay, now just to go on from there, or to just a brief discussion on uh, these factors again. The drag, remember the drag force is the upward force. Okay, the downward force is the weight of the can, which is very straightforward, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. This force uh, is used, we, we put the downward force equal to the upward force in order to calculate um, the required terminal velocity to see what we need to, to uh, what area we need to calculate the required velocity and I've done that. But what I'd like to just point out is in doing that we took the density of the air to be 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed that we can't guarantee on the day obviously the density of air can vary but that is the number that we were given to take and uh, it's a best guess so it's not an exact science in that sense the uh, drag coefficient um, also itself we were given a number if you're using a flat parachute uh, of a polygon of uh, I think it was 0.8 for a hexagon uh, and I think it was 1.2 if you were using a hemispherical uh, parachute. A hemispherical, a flat, is just a straight flat piece of material, uh, whereas a hemispherical involves, it is an actual hemispherical shape, and therefore it involves you making a variety of what are called gores and stitching them together so that the parachute actually does take on a hemispherical shape. You can also have a semi-elliptical parachute, I'm not even going to try to draw it, um, which is discussed in these documents above. And on top of that you can have a parafoil, which is quite a complicated one. Uh, that looks something like this, is a really rough drawing, but it's, it's the one that they would use um, paragliding. Okay, and um, this will be one you're using if you want to control where you're going. Now, the numbers for the drag coefficient um, normally when you're making a parachute the drag coefficient is actually calculated by testing so by drop testing the parachute or by testing in what's known as a wind tunnel okay and um, so basically uh, the wind tunnel tends to give you a lower drag coefficient than uh, testing in uh, by drop testing and that's because the wind, the added effect of wind, will make the velocity actually not straight downwards, but uh, um, in the direction affected by the wind. Okay, so again, even the, for, the way you test can, can come up with different values for the drag coefficient. Um, we will definitely have to do tests, drop tests, to ensure our velo terminal velocity, and we may make adjustments to the parachute as we go along. Um, stability is also a very important thing when the parachute is ejected from the, the rocket it can be quite a violent ejection and uh, we need to make sure that the material of the shroud lines uh, is strong enough and has been stitched on well enough to um, make sure that, that uh, the shroud lines don't become separated uh, during um, either during descent or during ejection. Uh, the material itself of the parachute is also very important and um, it needs to not rip easily obviously because it, you could just tear at the edges where the shroud lines are and um, uh, colorful is also a good idea so you could locate or identify your parachute in the air as quickly as possible and um, these websites again discuss that in more detail and um, the drag coefficient can be affected by the flow of air around the canopy so again that's where the shape of the canopy comes in and that's probably the, the shape of the canopy is the most important uh, impact on the drag coefficient and um, basically um, 
the surface area of the material is also very important. Um, and that even more so than the shape of the actual um, parachute, uh, because it is, it is shown basically by testing that the area of the, the kind of surface area of the parachute uh, has much more of an impact. Um, another important factor when you're talking about the area is the fact that uh, different shapes of parachute require different areas and different amounts of material. So again, if you're thinking about storage, sc scrunching up the parachute and uh, trying to get it to fit into a small space, that also has to be factored in when you're considering what areas you're using. On top of that, the complexity of the parachute, um, and you don't, you know, it could easily knot or tangle. Uh, on ejection, the parachute can also be likely to spin, which could cause a bit of problems. Um, and so therefore the way the guidelines or the shroud lines are actually attached to the can is important. In the can in 2016, we had to actually, we had a swivel thing here so that it, this could swivel, but it meant that the entire can wasn't just swiveling around and around so that the chute itself could spin around, but the can was staying pretty stable. Um, obviously the length of the shroud lines is also important. And there's basically the advice is to keep the length uh, divided by the diameter of the can canopy. So the length of the shroud line divided by the diameter should be greater than one if possible. Um, as I said, the stitching. Um, stability during the actual drop as well. So we found, again, for 2016, we cut a hole. It was a very windy day on one of our, um, one of our launches. So we cut a hole. Uh, and again, you need to look at that and look that up on the internet and find out a bit about it. Also, on actual ejection, there was recommendations that you actually have a little mini parachute that would uh, pull on the main one to come out. But we found that too complicated. But again, it's something worth thinking about. So my advice is really uh, to have a, a good look at the factors out there that may be important and may have an impact. And again, the drop testing will be done using a drone and um, so we're lucky enough to have a drone from the CANSAT 2016 and uh, you can obviously test out various um, shapes or areas and decide on which one would be the optimum for us. Really we're looking for a stable drop um, and not too fast. Okay, Ideally it's meant to be about 8 metres per second. Um, six meters per second if you're actually going to try a guided landing but the wind has a big effect and uh, obviously the shape of the parachute and so on as well so it, there's a bit of testing to be done in there as well as just plugging in numbers it sounds great until you actually uh, put it out there on the day the density of the air could be different and so on and um, okay so that's that's that uh, I don't think there's any more as I say I'd point you to these websites for more information and just let me double check no that's about it okay